She's an experiment. Good evening. Her brain and her body are not quite synchronized. But she's progressing at an accelerated pace. I do have to say just congratulations. The film is absolutely incredible. And also you're reteaming with your favorite director, Yorgos. But being on his set for this time around, what would you say would be the most surprising thing that you sort of learned working with him this intimately with such a lead character that has spanned so many different, I think, looks for you as an actor and also being a producer at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we worked on this and talked about it for years before we made it. So it just felt like such a collaboration. Like I felt right by his side and like he was right by my side through the whole thing. So I guess um, that is what I learned because on The Favorite, you know, I was, uh, I was getting to know him still and what it was like to work with him. And here we were really such a team that, um, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It was, it felt like such a trusting, great uh, experience because there was so much lead up to it and we had, you know, I, I knew about every aspect of, of how the film was going to be made and um, yeah. Take us a little peek inside of his like sort of style as a director because his films are such like wide swings. I just wonder what kind of environment does he sort of foster on set with his actors? Because the one thing everyone, Mark, Willem have sort of echoed is that it is totally unique to him as a director and they've worked with obviously hundreds like yourself. I think the rehearsal process is so imperative to Yorgos's process with actors. We. We have three weeks together, we're playing, we're having a great time, we're learning our dialogue, but in ways that are really unexpected and kind of strange and um, unique. And uh, by the end of that rehearsal process, the actors really feel great with each other and have a real you know, kinship. And so I think that's, that's a big part of his work with actors is letting us all feel good and trusting of each other because he's not an overly he doesn't really tell you what to do as an as a director. He he um, he's definitely not prescriptive about characters. He kind of wants to see where you want to take it, and then it's like subtleties and and moments like that. But I think he just hires people that he believes can play the roles and how he you know what he's envisioning, and and then he sort of lets you you know experience that together as a as a troupe, like a it feels like a theater company or something. It's really it's really special. So. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I absolutely adore that. That's I want great. to just come for a weekend. Oh to that God, you should camp. see it. It's so <laughs> wild. <laughs> I, especially. One thing I would love for you to talk about before you get out of here is Bella and how you sort of found her because in that theater camp, you sort of played with the versions of her character just from her speech affectation and, and how that develops over the course of the film. So I'd love you to take us inside how you sort of found that. Yeah, I mean, so much of it, in terms of the way she speaks, was in the script. You know, her and and Yorgos and Tony and I. After once we were rehearsing it and reading through it a few times, Yorgos and Tony and I would talk about, you know, shifting some certain things if she was in a different stage or if things didn't track as much. But and then Yorgos and I staged it out. We we made you know five stages of Bella's development because if we were going to be going back and forth, like at the beginning of the film. That was all in Baxter's house, which only exists for stage one and stage five, the, the the beginning and the end, and we hadn't done any of the middle yet. So it was it was really important to kind of work on the physicality in advance, but still like have enough freedom to figure it out as we were shooting. Um, and then yeah, the language and and the way she speaks, it, a lot of it honestly was was just sort of like trial and error as we went. Um, because she's not comparable really to anybody and you know the yeah. way she speaks and moves is is not something that you could we just kind of had to make it up <laughs> so um but it was so great it was so freeing to you know i again i i trust yorga so much and so we would just kind of like try another take with with little things changed and see what it's like and then um go from there so it was it was very um it was joyous to get to play like that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so, so very much. Um, Thank just you. real quick though, Bella Barbie, can we get a team up? Do you think you and Margot could do? There are two yeah. little wanderers. I love Margot. That would be, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is Bella. Ba, ba. Bella, this is Mr. McCandles. Hello, Bella. First of all, for both of you, Mark, I, I want to start with you because I love this anecdote. It was one of the funniest things when I got to speak to you before. The idea that you didn't think that you could play Duncan because of how awful he is and that you tried to fire yourself from the production. Um, I would love for you to talk about why that is and maybe why you actually enjoy looking back on it now because you were so good at it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again. Um good to see you. It scared me, you know, and, um, you know, it, it's really playing against type in a lot, or, or, or what, what people have come to see me as. And then, and then you start to buy into that a little bit yourself. And um, to really kind of push, push up against that, that, I was afraid I couldn't do it, honestly. And, and there's Yorgos and, and Willem and, and, and Emily and, and I, and, all of Yorgos's films, and I was just like, I don't want to fail in in that realm. And I was I was really terrified. I didn't know how to do it. And thank God we had the rehearsal process where I where I could find it, because I did not know how to just step into that and uh, and pl and play it. He did. He was there from day one. He made me laugh from day one. <laughs> he's been he's been modest. <laughs> no, this is a trick. No, because no, even in, in the middle of rehearsal, I was like, "Do you want to send me home, Yorgos? I, I I can't get the accent. I, I don't." You know. The joke was Oscar Isaac was working oh, yeah. in the other part of the, the studio, and and he kept on saying. I know he's here to replace me. I know he's here to replace me. It was it was a gag. I was sure. And and one day they all he he, he put him up to it. He comes into rehearsal and Oscar's like, "Hey man, good job, but it's time to go home." You did not. Yes, he oh, did. you're a prankster, Mr. Defoe. He's so oh, that's naughty. Third. That's part of the bonding process. It was. No, I love it because look. On the other side of it, I've seen this Duncan. I cannot imagine anyone else. I love Mr. Oscar Isaacs, but sir, that is your role. Thank you, you own him now. Whatever it is yours. Uh, Mr. Defoe, I want to make sure that we we talk about this because I know you don't like to get too bogged down into the physical transformation aspect of it. You're an actor. It's about taking us to a different place. But one thing I do love folks to hear about is what your guides were with your character because he is so fantastical. I know that Yorgos really tried to keep the imagery as realistic as possible within the fantasy. So I'd love for you to talk about some of the influences and things he showed you for how to bring our version of this Dr. Frankenstein to life. Um, you know, uh, the world was so complete. There was so much stuff to study. I learned how to do doctor things, how to suture, how to cut. Um, you could just wander around my house, and uh, the the level of detail really told me a lot about who this guy was, and uh, who I wanted to be. And then just the relationship is very complex. Also, there was a pleasure uh, uh, in playing uh, a doctor. Uh, I have medical people in my family. Um, somehow, uh, I grew up around um, surgeons and blood and labs and that sort of thing. So this was a different role than I had ever done before. And there were lots of physical things that helped uh, with a transformation, really invited you to be someone else. It's amazing. I find myself nearly jealous of the men's time with you rather than any moral aspersion against you. It is your body, Bella Baxter, yours to give freely. I generally charge 30 francs. Well, that seems low. I wanted to start with just how you sort of joined this incredible process because, I mean, let's be real, after The Favorite, um, Yorgos was not uh, sort of having a bunch of actors saying, you know, I don't want to work with that guy. Um, but I know particularly with you and Gerard, it was not only your sort of like relationship as filmmakers, but just how much they wanted to work with you that sort of led you to the project. So I'd love you to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was such an honor to even, you know, have a chat with Yorgos. And so, you know, we just had this really great conversation for a few hours. And then uh, 
at the end, he was like, you know, I'm working on this film and there's a part that uh, I think you'd be good at and, uh, you know, let me know if you'd want to do it. And I said, yeah, I'll do it. And then he said, you don't want to read it first? And I said, I, I'll read it, I'm, but I'm doing it. You know, I don't care. Like I, and I, and I said to him, I was like, dude, if, I'll do a beer commercial with you. I don't drink. I was like, I will do whatever. I'll sell whatever you <laughs> If I get to do it with you, I'm in. So there was that level of, of enthusiasm. And, uh, and, and yeah, just really felt this, this great connection to him for sure. I think it's also so hilarious, too, because of what he had in mind for you, because so many folks know you from, you know, both as a writer, but also as producer starring in your own show, but in a comedic sense. And not to say that Rami didn't have like serious moments to it, but you're playing very much the straight man in this. Like you were Dean Martin and, and Emma's doing the Jerry Lewis. So as a comedian, what was that like for you to sort of play that other side of it? And um, also, what did you think of Emma's sort of like just such hilarious comedic chops? I mean, Emma is so funny, and I think she's definitely the funniest person I've ever been across, uh, just in how fast she is and, and, and how smart she is and, and all the choices that she makes. And obviously in this, in this movie, you know, she's, she's doing so many different things depending on where she's at in her character's development. Uh, and, and for me, I, I was really thankful that your ghost saw me doing something totally different than anything I'd done. And this is my first film. And so to be able to do that and, and you know, not just do accent work, but play this doctor and kind of really step into something that it was like there was a part of me that felt, oh, yeah, I know I can and want to act in all sorts of different ways. And uh, it was cool to not even have to advocate for myself in that way he just kind of said no I think you could do this and uh and that was that was really cool yeah so what was the hardest part not cracking up the accent um being able to look Willem in the face and not just be like what is up with your makeup dude and your Willem <laughs> Dafoe tell me which one's the hardest one to navigate I mean you know to, for me the hardest part was probably leaving when when we wrapped you know Willem and I wrapped at the same time and that was just I was like man this was just so much fun you know even doing the accent work which took a while it was never frustrating you know it was always just it felt really expansive and really collaborative and you know Willem and I uh studied with a mortician and and, and you know we shot the film in Europe and so we're just with this mortician in Europe cutting open you know animal organs and I was just kind of like oh yeah this is uh I didn't think I would be doing this yet at the same time. I, I totally understand that I'm doing, you know, it somehow made <laughs> all the sense in the world uh, that life would bring me here. I absolutely love it. And again, just like Oscar winners galore, just sort of littering, uh, Oscar nominees and Oscar winners galore, littering the entire place. But I will ask you for you, sort of stepping onto a Yorgos Lanthimon set, I'm guessing you were obviously a fan of his work prior to that. What was the most surprising aspect of your collaboration and working with him as a director? I, I, I think for me, you know, I've always been a huge fan of his and, and, you know, I saw Dogtooth so many years ago and it was just one of those, I remember the people I was watching it with were like, what did I just watch? And I, and I just was like, this is one of my favorite things I've ever seen, <laughs> you know? So I, I have like that kind of level of, of, of love for him. And I think what really surprised me from even getting the script to getting on, you know, on set was just how... It was a comedy, you know, and, and he's so comedic. And I think there's so many choices that he makes that takes what he does to a level way beyond a comedy or, or how we know comedy, but at its core, it's a comedy. So I was really surprised in how familiar it felt for me. It, I didn't feel like, in, in so many ways, I felt expanded, right? But in so many other ways, it felt really familiar. And I think that's, uh, I think that's why everyone is so good in it because that, that's what the environment was. Yeah. 